workshop по wildness medicine. Яко будет проводить и, собственно, <laughs> все. Сейчас посмотрим, как все будет. Сейчас мы подождем всех участников и начнем. Basically, I will do the workshop in English. I will talk slowly, and if you uh, do, uh, if there's something you don't understand, ask Kostya or anybody else to just translate. Because my Russian is really poor, and my Ukrainian is even worse. So <laughs> very much apologies. The only thing I can say is "привет," and <laughs> that's where it stops. Um, so I've been asked to tell you a little bit about. Uh, how it is to work um, as a doctor when you are on an expedition. And it doesn't necessarily mean that if you go uh, as a doctor on an expedition, but it can also be that you go with some friends hiking in the mountains, or you go on a uh, cycling tour, or you go, go diving on some remote place. All the, the skills I can teach you today can be used there. Uh, because the most important thing is that you use a structured approach and that you just improvise with the things you have. So what I will first tell you a little bit about is the structured approach we use in expedition medicine and how to assess patients. And then we will play around a little bit with the materials I brought, which mainly are materials which you would bring with you if you go uh, hiking anyway, or if you go uh, with a boat anyway, somewhere. So they're just no sophisticated stuff, it's just the stuff you have there. Um, so the first thing I want to give you, you just can pass it around. And, and this one, if you can fill out later, so for the other. I just put it there. So, you have a structured approach. When you assess the patient, uh, in expedition medicine we use March. It is similar to what you may have heard uh, in trauma medicine uh, from the ATLS perspective when they say A, B, C, D, E. But March is a little bit different and it's specifically different for things you can experience when you're outside the hospital. A, B, C, D, E is really for inside the hospital. March is more for outside the hospital. So the first thing we start off with when we assess a patient in the outdoors, big bleedings, like arterial bleedings, things like that, because they, they kill first, they kill even more earlier than an airway probably. So I'll show you some materials there. The second step, what you do if you assess somebody in uh, 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 an outdoor environment, this is the airway of the C spine, like the A from A. Then you check for the respiration, then for the rest of the circulation, and then the main difference is the last letter, and that is to make a decision very early on. Are we going to stay here? Are we going to treat the patient? Or are we going to evacuate the patient? And they have the letter H for that, for height. Continue with what we are doing, yes. treat, and then we stay here, or we call the helicopter. But unfortunately, in many parts of the world, there are no helicopters, so helicopter means evacuation. Okay? So, uh, guys, in front of you, let's put the tarp here. <coughs> so, one of you can lay down. Yeah. <coughs> Who wants to be the victim first? Yeah. Any of you want oh. to be the victim? Show it later. So imagine we are in the hills and we're walking on a path and we find this man. We don't know what happened. So first we are going to say, hello, hello. Is he responding? Is he saying something? No, okay. First we check if there are no big bleeding. So we just quickly check with our hands to see if there's blood on our hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah? 
sometimes you will see that the lack is off, or there's like big blood around, so then we have to stop it. The second thing, we don't know what happened, so we have to immobilize the C-spine. We're going to take your head away for a second. With our hands like this, we say hello, and then he opens his eyes and says hello. You can say hello. Hello. Okay. So, <laughs> We keep the C-spine. Now, it's very difficult for me to help the patient now. So, Kostya, can you help me, take over for me? Okay. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, what would you use in the hospital to stabilize the C-spine? What can you use? Cervical uh, collar. Cervical collar. What else? Sometimes you have sandbags or something like that. Yes. But here we have... What do we have? Well, let's see. I've got, a, I've got some backpacks here. Let's, for example, use, use the backpacks to put next to the head. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, something soft and bulky. Yeah. It's, it's easy. Or at least something which makes sure that the head doesn't move around too much. Uh, another thing you can use for the uh, T-spine is something which some hikers would have in their pocket. It's a, a Sam splint. It's about uh, four or five euros to buy. And you can use it for a lot of things. I will pass it around later. It's basically a small plate of aluminium with foam around it. Weighs nothing. You can always stuff it somewhere in your backpack. So Kostya, we take the head again. Yeah? So we slide this behind the neck. And we just Fold it around like this, and then like this. And we have a C color. But you can use it for other things as well. I will pass it around so you can have a few. There you go. I used one. Yeah. It's very easy. You can cut it with scissors. It's also like if you even have a broken finger, you can use it. So that we can do for the C spine. Yeah. So the next step is to assess the airway. Airway. So the gentleman was talking to me, so that's a good thing. Otherwise, you would, you would do the same as what you would do in the hospital. You would open the airway and see. And it makes, of course, a difference if you're very close to the hospital or if you're somewhere very far in the jungle. If you're very far in the jungle and there's an airway problem, the patient has a big, big problem. Because if you, you can open the airway, but you, if you have to still bring the patient out for 10 hours or two days, then you might have a problem. But you open the airway. But here the airway is intact. The next thing is to check for respiration. How do we normally check for respiration? To count and the pulse and the risk of the chest. Yes, so basically normally we have our stethoscope, of course. <laughs> but we are now not in the woods, so we don't have our stethoscope. Look, listen, feel. So how do we use this look, listen, feel? So we can just check if the chest is coming up, which is coming up, if it's symmetric, if you can hear any sounds. Mm -hmm. And they actually developed the stethoscope so we don't have to touch the patient. Huh? But you can still use your ear and just listen like this. But we as doctors don't like to touch the patient, so that's why we have the stethoscope. So, but you can still listen like this. His respiration is okay. So then for circulation, how can we assess the circulation? Pulse, check pulse, pulse. central arteries. So if we can feel the radial pulse, there is a radial pulse. What do we know then of systolic blood pressure? It's more than, yeah. 90. More than 90. More than 90, yes. If we check in the, in the carotid. More than, more than 60. 60. More than 60. And in femorals? Uh, 70. Yes. So basically 90, 60, 70 more or less. But you check for pulse. Another thing which you can do is check for uh, capillary refill. You press on the sternum for five seconds. Yeah, this is easy or sternum is best because if you're in the outdoors, uh, imagine it's cold. You get very much uh, vasoconstriction in the hands uh, and anywhere else. So on the chest, most people will have clothes there, so it's easier. You check for five seconds and you see how fast it comes back. What is a normal response time for a capillary refill? Less, 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 up to two seconds. Two seconds. two seconds, yes. So you expect to come back in two seconds. Of course, if you find any abnormality, you act and you see what you can do. So, 
then the next thing is, okay, what's going on? So I ask him what happened. He has fallen down. Okay, so he's fallen down. And we ask him if he can stand up. Okay, he cannot stand up. So we assess to see what is the problem. Does he have a broken leg, a broken arm? Does he just have too much alcohol? We don't know now. Yeah? So, but basically, right now we see somebody who's been lying here. He didn't get up himself. We can try to assess. But at this point, I think we have to evacuate this patient. Because if he would have been in the forest and he would have come up himself, it, it, he would have done it already. But we don't know how long he has been here. He says he can't get up. So I would ask Osha to try to see if somebody has a phone who works or a radio or get some like uh, forest uh, um, <coughs> staff to see who, anybody who's around to contact somebody and say that we've got uh, uh, somebody here who needs help or probably needs evacuation and then you just have to know what is available in the area and sometimes you don't know but you have to ask locals and find out okay thank you so this is the basic march approach <laughs> you're back okay now <laughs> yes sorry for the thought um, so this is basically the, 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 the standard approach for the, the evaluation which is quite similar to ABCD but for especially the first thing, for the major hemorrhage, the march, uh, the M, and the last thing, the hike or helicopter, that's really important and it's really important to think about it very early. In, in the hospital you don't have to think of evacuation. You can ask other doctors, you can ask other people to help. But it might be that it takes a, a long time to evacuate the patient. So if you think about it early, it is easy. Now, just to come back a little bit to major hemorrhage. What can you use to stop a bleeding? Let's say arterial bleeding in the leg. What can you use? Tourniquet. Direct pressure. Direct pressure is the first thing. Direct pressure. Use cloth, use a, use a sweater, use a whatever you can find. Press on it. So what is the second step? Tourniquet, tourniquet. tourniquet. If tourniquet. Yes, so now, okay, so tourniquet. So who, let's see. Uh, did I have one here? Oh, I here. Was tourniquet. Here, here, here. So this is. Everybody has used the tourniquet before. Yes. Yeah. If you didn't use it before, this is a trainer. So don't worry. You can not stop the bleeding with this one. But the tourniquet is actually made, so you can use it yourself and basically put it on. So with the Velcro and then up. This one goes off and then you turn it until it becomes really tight and then you lock it and then the bleeding should stop. If it doesn't stop it's not tight enough. There's different versions of twin, okay? This is one of the most used one. This is a, a, a cat one. So imagine you don't have this. What do you use? Mm. Rope. Uh, I would choice. not Very use rope. Why is rope a bad choice? Traumatic. It's traumatic. It's traumatic. It cuts inside the, the flesh and actually it is not very effective to uh, help. What else can you use? Triangular uh, belt. A belt. Why should you not use a belt? Because it's not work. <laughs> Basically because it doesn't work. A belt can work if it's a fabric belt. But the best thing is to find something fabric. So like for example, what I always, when I go outside, I always have with me is one of those triangular bandage. Mm -hmm. They're very light. You can use them for anything. You just pull them up. You put them around. And then what you do, if you just find any stick, you put the stick on top of it. Do you have a stick here? No. Uh, let's okay. do it. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit stronger stick. But you put it on top. Like this. And you turn until the bleeding stops. And then you harder to control such turn. It is harder, but the most important is, is that it's wide. That it's not cutting. 
So it should have some white and then you just pull it under like this. Of course, these ones are much more better also for transporting the patients. You have to be careful that it uh, doesn't blow. So in the, you know how old is the tourniquet? How old? They already used it in the French wars when they were still fighting, fighting the British in the 16th and 17th centuries. But what was the problem of the tourniquet? Why did we stop using tourniquets? Uh, this. Uh, why did we have to amputate the people's legs when they uh, used tourniquets? It took a long time long to time. get to the hospital. Yes, exactly. So basically what they found out is if you put tourniquets around people's arms or legs, you put them on, the tissue behind it is quite simple. The tissue behind it doesn't get any op uh, uh, oxygen anymore, any blood anymore, and it dies. So basically the tissue behind it dies. And what happens in that tissue? What, what, what kind of stuff gets into your blood if there's that tissue? You get acidosis, you get all uh, prostaglandin, everything comes out, all the debris comes into the bloodstream here. So if you release the tourniquet, it will all go into the body and it creates, it creates severe septic shock. So at that moment they say, okay, we should never use tourniquets again. So when did we start using tourniquets again? Logistics. And it's quite recent event actually. Which war did we start? With? Because everything in medicine starts with a war. Huh? It's like the, the plaster of the leg is uh, yeah. made of uh, the plaster of parents, designed by a, uh, a military surgeon. The tourniquets uh, are introduced by military surgeons. So which war did we start? Well, thinking? Yes, World War One. No, the the, the the war in Afghanistan actually after 9/11. Because what happened there is the Americans came in, there were the local Taliban created a lot of uh, EODs, uh, the uh, explosive devices, which gave a lot of limb injuries. A lot of limb injuries and a lot of loss of life as well. And then they started to use this, what the heck we are going to use the tourniquets again, we don't care. And then they realized that it actually saves lives. But you just have to do it a sensible way. It's like it's tourniquets do save lives. You have to stop the bleeding. You cannot say, okay, sorry, you're bleeding out. But you know, I learned in medical school I should never use a tourniquet. Sorry, guys. Bye. And he's dead two minutes later. So you can save a life. And then you can deal with the problems later. But that's also why nowadays on the modern tourniquet, there is always a label which says time. So you just have to note when the tourniquet went on. So that if you come into a hospital, whether that's two hours later, whether that's three days later, they know when the tourniquet went on. And if you get somebody in your hospital and it says, okay, the tourniquet went on on the 8th of October, it's better to leave it on probably and go to theater and do the amputation above the tourniquet. So, but this is basically uh, what started to save lives uh, in Afghanistan. Another thing you can use for, imagine that the, the bleeding is in a location where you cannot use the tourniquet, like in the groin, in the armpit. What do you do then? Somebody fell off a tree with a uh, tree wedged in the arm and subclavian artery burst. What do you do? You cannot put the tourniquet around the chest. Well, if you pack, to pack, pack the wound. Yes. Something. Well, what you said is like you can put a bandage around it or pack the wound. And then, that's the best. Yes. And nowadays, the, the best thing to use for packing the wound are the hemostatic gauzes. They have some proteins of shrimp or anything in it. I know what it is. And uh, you just pass it around. But the trick is, uh, what's that? Are these uh, the ones you can show? Or? Yep, yeah. yep, no problem. So if you open it, just open it. Right now? Yeah. If you take it out, and see if it's an old fashioned one or if it's a modern one. You just open. pull it open. Pull it open. Yeah. I think this is uh, actually an Israeli bandage. Okay, this is not a. Okay. Sorry, this is not a hemostatic gauze, this is Israeli bandage. Maybe you can show best how to use this one. Uh, just Cos for bandage? Yes, because she has most experience in this or one. Or just for packing? Because for packing, uh, for bandage, like for example bandage. in the armpit. 
Да, окей. Ну, типа, есть много вариантов, как запаковать. На самом деле, израильский бандаж для этого не самый лучший, но для начала куча вариантов. Можем просто начать перематывать, можем начать перематывать через шею, но один из наиболее удобных будет так, потому что нам надо, чтобы у нас давление было по диагонали. Желательно, конечно, что-то подложить, чтобы был объем, потому что тогда не будет получаться давление. Идеально чуть-чуть приподнять руку и начать делать так. Также можно постараться потом зафиксировать, уже когда у вас будет какая-то основа через плечо, но есть большая вероятность, что оно слезет. Но, тем не менее, yes. таким образом можно сделать элементарную перевязку. And you should try this, because basically, especially when you put your arm down, you feel that there's a lot of pressure and it will stop the bleeding. So this is as a bandage, but when it's a hemostatic gauze, the old-fashioned ones were rolled in a roll. But the hemostatic gauze, you should never wrap around. You have to put it inside the wound. So now most new hemostatic gauze are like uh, folded like wafers, so easy fold. Easy fold. So you don't get tempted to wrap it around uh, a wound. Because if you wrap it around, it doesn't work. It really needs, needs to go inside the wound and get in touch with the blood. So the, the clotting agent basically closes off. Okay, so we've packed the wounds. Uh, that, that. You, you, if you want to just later on we can you can uh, try all the materials yourself try you have the a, you have a color gel ah, this is a so basically the old one was rolled down it, you can also use normal gauze and basically what you do is you just take it and you just push it inside the wood you push it Yeah. So th this is the wound. You just push it in, 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 until it's really full. So, and this works with hemostatic gauze, but also with normal gauze, and it also works with a sweater, and it also works with a sock. It's maybe good to give the patient antibiotics when he gets to the hospital, but you need to stop the bleeding. So improvise if you have. Tunicate, great. If you don't have tunicate, use uh, a cloth. Use a piece of your clothes. Just rip it and use that. If you want to pack a wound, use hemostatic gauze. If you don't have it, or Israeli bandage. If you don't have it, use normal gauze. Just push it in and keep on giving pressure. And if you don't have it, use, a clo use clothes. Use your uh, jeans, whatever. Just you have to stop the bleeding. Okay, now we have stabilized the patient and we are in the mountains uh, and uh, it, it is about four kilometers to the next village and we've been told they can't arrange any transport for us. A patient is on the floor but he's unable to mobilize. So how do we get him to the village? What would you suggest? Mm. The patient cannot be mobilized. Huh? Yeah. The, the, the patient cannot get up, he cannot walk himself anymore. He has, a, let's say, a broken ankle. So we use something to carry him. We like use something to carry him. Some, we, we can improvise, mm -hmm. need some improvised rigid construction. Yes. Okay. So we, 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 can, we can try indeed, indeed to do that and we will just practice it now. Mm -hmm. But realize, whatever mo method you use, even with the best litter, or let's say we use an ambulance stretcher, the best thing around. Look at this terrain, there's like hills and all that. How long, how fast are you able to transport a patient with just manual carrying over a distance of four kilometers? How much time will that take? Two hours. Two hours? Anybody else has anything one else? Hour. One hour? It depends. It depends. That's always a good answer. <laughs> Don't put that on your exam though, because you will fail. But no, realize that you are extremely snow, slow. Let's say that a normal hiking pace is 10 kilometers per hour. A normal walking pace on the street is about 6 kilometers per hour. If you are carrying, transporting a patient, you should be lucky 
if you can do one kilometer per hour because you need your strength like you have been hiking yourself as well so you have to realize that your speed is significantly reduced even if you have the best ambulance stretch so now some ways of transporting patients different methods but let's say you've just been climbing in the mountain and you have your mountain rope here with you is to make a rope litter so i want you to try this all so we already can get the other rope also uh, untied we've got a second rope okay. so what we do is what you said a rope litter an easy way to make a rope litter is you take a big rope and you start making shapes like this on the floor a little bit zigzagging up and down and who wants to be the victim now? Could somebody to be the victim now again? Our patient is uh, basically laying here but we don't want him to be blinded by the sun so we'll let him stand for now for a minute so but first let's try to make a little bit nicer zigzag ropes like this Longer. yes no oh, this this is this is probably right you make them from like half a meter 60 centimeters wide and you go up and down yeah this is more or less how long our patient is you always have to be a little bit more enthusiastic mm -hmm. okay we have to transfer him over a long way we have bad weather, so we're going to use some materials. So we're going to use the tarp. We're going to lay it on top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, lay it down. Yeah. Now we want to make sure that we can find something sturdy. We were with the boat. So we have some paddles, but you can use anything, big sticks, walking sticks, we have some skis here. Tent poles. Tent poles. Well, be careful with tent poles because they break. You have to get something which I is mean, not breaking. Well, but also, know. like, if you don't have a tarp, you can just use the, uh, uh, the... But if you don't have anything else, tent poles are great. You can also use the tent yourself as a tarp. Basically, uh, see that, okay. Uh, and then we have the sleeping bag. Open? So yes, it needs to be open. Okay. Yeah. Just see how we are with Okay. This is the best trick I've learned how to use your sleeping bag. Imagine you have got somebody with neck injuries. Modern sleeping bags, they are all reinforced. Huh? So you lay it like that. Okay, now our patient come and lay down. Normally we help him, transport him here. So we lay him down like this. And then the sleeping bag, just go a little bit more south. <laughs> just take your head off, here there you go. Just a little bit more up. Yep. Yeah, up, up, yep. up, up, up. Yeah. So, you can use the sleeping bag. So the, the, the belt of the, uh, uh, the bandage basically for C-spine immobilization. Mm -hmm. There will be rigid poles here in the back. This will make sure that it doesn't move it. You can use the SAM splint to put around if you have it. But this really helps the patient. Okay, then we put him... We have to make sure that he doesn't cool down. So we put uh, it over him. <coughs> it will be very hot on this beautiful day. You have to make sure that this, you have to uh, make sure that the environment allows for this. Yes. Okay. And the next step will be to start and wrapping up. You want to make sure that you can still breathe, so that's quite important. Okay. Now the most important thing of the litter 
is to basically make it tight. This rope has nice uh, hooks on the end, but you can also make just uh, a small loop at the end to start off with. So we take the rope here and we try to pull it from the other side and we just push it through like this. Yeah? Okay. Then we take the rope here and we push it through again. Yeah? Now. And we go again through here. Yes? Okay. I think that was a little bit too enthusiastic. But it still seems to work. Yeah. Sometimes you have to readjust a bit. And you just keep on going. Uh, okay, yeah, we have to make a little bit more. It will be fine. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this one was. Uh, let me see, it's now going back. Oh no, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Where is this going? Something went wrong. Yeah, something went wrong. No, this was right. Wait, should be this loop. No, no, no. Why is this going here? Pull this one there. Pull this one. Okay, pull, pull this back. Yeah, this one. Okay. Yeah, this one goes here. Yes. Okay. And then let me see where this one goes. Is this? Yeah. Okay. Like this. Yes. Yes. Now we have gone enough. This one goes on. Okay. Try to pull it back there. It should come back. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zagalo is with me. You are breathing? <laughs> yes. Okay. Make sure that you don't <laughs> suffocate him. <laughs> Patients don't like that. Uh, to get this one here. This one here. I think it's this one. Pull it here. Yeah. 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 This one there. Pull, 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 pull that way. No, 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 this one. This one. Yeah. Okay, this one. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah, this. this one, okay. Uh, how did it get there? Okay. So actually this one... Yes, uh, so this one uh, needs to go here. And then that one needs to go there. And then around the chest you tie it up. Because you're not going over the, over the neck. It's okay. We are, it's okay, we don't need more. Basically here, you just tie this up. Are you okay? Okay, and we lock it with this one. Okay, now three people on this side and three people on this side. Come, help. Help out. Yes, they always go into the direction of the patient, just make sure that this one is really uh, Okay? Two more people, because it's, uh, you need, like, you really need three people. Can some, one other person come and help? Can you help in this side? Okay. And then, the person at the head counts. Three, four. Okay, and you can go back. <laughs> Okay, go back. <laughs> okay. How does this feel? So, so long. It's okay, okay. 
So this is one way. Uh, we have a couple of minutes more, so we, if you want to, we can practice uh, <laughs> this here. So um, we have uh, another rope. We have two uh, tarps. So if you want to try it yourself, you can make the, the rope litter yourself, and then, we'll, then you have some experience on how to do this if you want to transport the patient in the, in the outdoors. To find the victim. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Jump up. Okay. Thank you for the patient. <laughs> okay. Um, so try yourself. Just get the get the rope. Make the S's. And then uh, we have we have two ropes and two uh, tarts. No, this is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> This, they have to first make, uh, start off with the S's because now they all folded up. So you have to. Uh, make it. I think I would use the other yellow rope. The, uh, the skis. And, you, and we can do it with skis too. Ski fold. Yeah. It's a new one, so it's still a little bit sturdy. So now you just first you start off with making uh, uh, the S pattern on the floor. So you just take one end and you put like it in S's up and down. Mm. Now I would like to make it uh, half a meter. Like this. It should be like more than, uh, almost like one and a half times the patient. So you just have to see where, if you make sure that the mattress is here, where the, yeah. yeah. So you probably have to come a little bit more with all the tarp as well. Like this, okay? Can you put it like a... Basically, if you try to transport it, just use your own materials and use a lot of padding. So if people are soft, you can use extra sweaters, jackets, uh, but really to make it nice and soft. So if you have enough, you can put another sleeping bag under it. Uh, uh, because even in environments like this, patients will cool down if they don't move. So. Yeah, okay, now you start with wrapping up the feet and then make sure that it doesn't we can suffocate, huh? <laughs> yeah? okay. He would not like it's it. Yeah. Yeah. So getting this one through and put it... No, no, no. Like no. this. Through. Through. Like this. And this is the next loop. Mm. And you put this one through. Through. Yes. And then that one. Now be careful that you don't pull it all the way. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, no. She didn't know, huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Yeah. And if you feed it through, because sometimes you have to feed it through a little bit, make sure that you don't pull the whole loop out. Mm -hmm. So if you have too little, yeah. okay. just go through. Oh. But also, also, also look here. Look. Make sure you tighten mm -hmm. it up. Yeah, so you can go. Yeah. Because like, and you have to, especially with the legs, you don't need much. So you just can go here. Okay, this one we pull back. Uh, can we see? Yeah. Which one is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then you go through. Yes, you take it. Yeah? Cheers. Okay. Let's go. Okay. 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 And like here, for example, now the pedal, you see the pedal comes up. So to make sure that the pedal stays down. Yeah. So it doesn't go uh, on top of his head or something like this. Mm -hmm. It's basically like making a mummy. 
Ah, like here, you have too much, so you have to put these ones right there, and then let's see which one it is. This one from Peru. Let's see which wire this is. So how does it feel? Yeah, come on. I think well. <laughs> А я им такая говорю, а прах мы привезете сюда и развеете здесь. И потом каждый год собираетесь и поминаете меня. Какая довольно подошла мурда. Я сейчас Like now we do it really fast. But before you want to do the four kilometer, you make sure that the patient is really, really very uh, stable and safe, obviously. Okay, let's try to lift him and see if the patient is not going to scream and shout. Yeah, okay. You, you count? How is it? Only his eyes are a little bit like... Uh, okay, let's go down again. Okay, you... Okay. 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 So, передаю привет маме. Do you still have any questions now at this moment? Sometimes it really takes a very long time, and you will have to improvise. So that's the most important thing. Um, this was just very short, in just an hour, just something. So hopefully you liked it. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, I will, uh, today I will tell you a little bit more during one of the lectures about my experience in the North Pole and the South Pole. And tomorrow I will also uh, do a lecture on how you can prepare if you actually know that you're going to be the doctor during an uh, expedition, what you can do <laughs> to prepare yourself. Yeah? So before you leave, please leave your uh, name and email address and I will send you a, small, a very sh short evaluation form. And I can send you a, a certificate that you participated in the... Uh, yeah? Thank you for helping to... Uh, no, I can use the other one. Yes, I'm using You already wrote the name. Of course, you wrote Somebody else wants to write the name. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Не, просто Рыбу как Рыбу 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 how does it feel? <laughs> okay, this is comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Okay. It's comfortable. Okay, great. Excellent. Just after the film, that's not my first time. <laughs> ah, okay, you did this one before? Right? Yes. Ah. So I also told the other ones, uh, these were just like some sh small uh, introduction on how you can uh, uh, prepare yourself if you, if you go outdoors. As you see, most of it is improvising, because you never know what equipment you will have. You are like the proper expedition doctor when you go to the Himalayas and all that. You will Ah, okay. рюкзак. Кстати, вот насчёт фиксации шейного отдела. Вообще, вообще шикарно. А если, например, это как такие нам выдавали, то что ты Что, что, что? Мне кажется, хорошо, твой рюкзак Сашка. Если такие, как нам выдавали, что нема фиксации. тогда надо брать с собой этот минимум Кстати, фиксирует хорошо. Real expedition doctor.
what stuff you have to bring, how you have to prepare. So it goes a little bit beyond the improvisation. This is just a one hour, one hour course, so it's just very limited. So you can't go into the real advanced things, <laughs> but hopefully you still like it. Do you still have some questions? She has a pattern for it. No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.